Hello people of YouTube, and welcome to my newest segment, the Friday Nerdgasm! <laughs> okay, enough of that. Today's Friday Nerdgasm, we're going to talk about what is, in my opinion, the most awesome thing in the history of ever that's ever been created, ever. Harry Potter! Oh yeah, let's get it. So, since I can't imagine anyone not knowing what Harry Potter is at this point, I'm just going to jump right into it and talk about why I think Harry Potter is the best thing ever. For one thing, look at this awesome robe I'm wearing. I mean, come on, these people get to wear these things every day, all right? And they get to wave one of these around all over the place. Just everything just happens to them. See, it's just like, just wave it. Just wave it. Stuff happens, okay? Like, I can make this cup float. See? See? See, I'm making the cup float. Oh, yeah. Butterbeer mug, by the way best stuff ever. I, su I highly suggest trying it. This isn't actually butterbeer, though. That's going back down. Oh, yeah. That was obviously not real magic, but you get the point. So, enough about the obvious reasons why Harry Potter is awesome. Uh, for the not-so-obvious ones. They have candy that will hop away from you if you don't get a hold of it. And inside the candy, they have cards. What's better than candy and cards? Nothing. That's what. Okay, then. Can you see me? Okay. I'm going to stand here and talk while I drink my butter beer. <clears throat> now, the first three books in the series, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, The Chamber of Secrets, and The Prisoner of Azkaban, don't have all that much to do with the next four. Because up until The Prisoner of Azkaban, there didn't seem to be a real, coherent, continuing storyline. Except that... He who must not be named. You know who the Dark Lord, Lord Voldemort, if you have no idea, was trying to come back after Harry, the boy on the cover of each of these books, kept stopping him because Harry destroyed his body in the events prior to the Sorcerer Stone happening. So the first three books, they were okay. They weren't the best. But then from Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, on, there was a real coherent storyline. As in, the Dark Lord managed to make his comeback in the Goblet of Fire by killing a boy that Harry was competing against in a big tournament. I don't even know why I'm actually explaining all of this, because no doubt everyone watching this video has already seen the movies at the very least, and if you're a real fan, you've read the books in your... And if you're a real fan, you read the books while wearing your own authentic Gryffindor robe and sipping butterbeer. So then some other interesting things happened in Order of the Phoenix through the Deathly Hallows. And uh, if you've been on the internet for any amount of time, you know Snake kills Dumbledore. It's unfortunate, but hey, it happened. But then if you've read the Deathly Hallows, you've you find out that it was all planned. Spoiler alert. Now I'm doing this first Friday Nerdgasm on Harry Potter in honor of the upcoming Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2 movie. It's coming out July 15th. Yeah, I think it was July 15th. I'm not positive. I'll have to check on that. But, yeah, July 15th. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2 comes out at midnight, and obviously yours truly will be there wearing exactly what I'm wearing right now. Booyah. So, yeah. I mean, Harry Potter has all of the classic legendary creatures, dragons, unicorns, centaurs, giants, I mean, elves, although they're miniature house elves, <coughs> which I never really understand, understood. Excuse me, I still don't understand it, actually. <clears throat> and they have griffins, they have hippogriffs, which are like griffins, except the back part is horse instead of lion. I, I don't know, J.K. Rowling's a little cra crazy. Hey, she's British, what do you expect? So, and then they've got all of that, mermaids, flying carriages, ships that come up out of the ocean, instead of, you know, just sailing along on top of it, they just sink on the ocean and come up out of it, although it's a lake, actually. 
Ah, back on topic, back on topic. Although, I never actually got off of topic, so yeah, staying on topic! So, yeah, Harry Potter is just... If you don't like it, nothing's gonna change your mind. You're never going to like it. But if you really like it, it it's a, it's an all-or-nothing kind of thing. If you like Harry Potter, you like it. You, you love it. You, you just can't get enough. I mean, I have read each of these books ten times, and I know the plot lines by heart, I know the characters, uh, I mean, I know everything about them. Dumbledore's gay, if, if anyone still didn't know that. Dumbledore is gay. And that's another thing I'd like to address. People say that this entire series is just about a boy struggling to come to terms with his own gayness. It's like being a wizard is a metaphor for being gay. No. No. Dumbledore's the only gay character. Unless, yeah, Dumbledore was the only gay character in the whole thing, except for maybe Voldemort was gay. No one ever really talked about any love interests that he had, but hey, who knows, right? So, yeah, that's my Friday nerdgasm about Harry Potter. So, I'm just going to sign off now with 